Good morning, and thank you for joining us for worship from Second Presbyterian Church in Portsmouth, Ohio. My name is Allison Bauer, and I'm the pastor here at Second Pres, and I'm glad you're with us today. It's Sunday, May 31st, and we're celebrating Pentecost, the day when the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to the first disciples. Today's service will include the sacrament of communion, so I hope you have some bread and wine or juice ready to go. Once again, I am grateful to the village at Second Pres that makes this worship service possible each week. Particularly, I am grateful to Second Pres member Wilma James for sponsoring today's service in honor of the James and Cookson family. To Dr. Stan Workman, Director of Music here at Second Pres, and Justin Wiggett, Director of Music at All Saints Episcopal Church across town for providing the music. To Second Pres member Cara Penley for playing the flute for the anthem, My Heart Ever Faithful by Johann Sebastian Bach. To friend of the church, Sarah Simmons for singing the introit, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, and the song which will follow the sermon called Holy Spirit, the dove sent from heaven. And finally, to Second Pres member Jason Kessinger for today's readings. And if you're still in a churchy mood later on today, we hope you will join us at 4 p.m. right here on WIOI for a Vespers hymn sing led by the dynamic duo of Stan Workman and Justin Wiggett. That's 4 p.m. today here on WIOI. In addition, a video of that service will be available on our YouTube channel. Also, as a side note, Second Pres will resume in-person worship next Sunday, June 7th. And while we are making several important adjustments to the ways we will gather in person, we will try to keep the worship service itself similar to what you've been hearing for the last couple of months. The service will continue to be available at 9.30 a.m. here on WIOI, as well as by video on our YouTube channel later in the day on Sunday. Once again, I'm grateful that you are worshiping with us today, and I pray that God comes close to you during this service and meets you exactly where you are. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Please join with me in the call to worship. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. On this Pentecost day, we rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill our worship with grace and truth and love. Calm our trembling hearts and breathe life into your people. Let all people of God rejoice. The day of Pentecost is here. Holy God, the light of your Spirit has fallen upon us. The seal of your ownership is on us, and you have placed the Holy Spirit in our hearts. The privilege is ours to be called to share in the loving, healing, and reconciling mission of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in this age and wherever we are. Hear the cries of our hearts in this time of worship as we pray for those who are trapped in domestic violence situations during this time of quarantine and isolation. We pray for those who live each day in fear because of the color of their skin and suffer violence, even death, because of the evils of hatred and bigotry. We pray for those who are hunted and haunted by addiction and depression and mental illness. Gracious God, may we who have power find the courage to use that power on behalf of someone else. Since without you we can do no good thing, may your Spirit make us wise. May your Spirit guide us. May your Spirit renew us. And may your Spirit strengthen us so that we will be strong in faith, discerning in proclamation, courageous in witness, and persistent in good deeds. And Lord, in those moments when we fall short of the mark, when we hurt those whom we love the most with impulsive words and deeds, when we remain silent in the face of injustice, when we do not reach out a helping hand to a neighbor, we ask that you would extend your grace to us once again. And so in these next few moments, hear our own personal confession of how we have failed to love you and our neighbors.
remind us once again that those who are in Christ are a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. And all this is from God, with whom we have been reconciled through the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. Spirit of the living God, melt us, mold us, and fill us again with your power, using us for your work, so that our lives may glorify you in all we think and say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Open our eyes and soften our hearts, O God, that through the work of your Holy Spirit, that in hearing your word, we may receive new life in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the book of Numbers, 
chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the Spirit that was on him and put on the seventy elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran, ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the, tent, in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today is the story of Pentecost, as told in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Hear again what the Spirit is saying to you, the church. When the day of Pentecost had come, they, that is the disciples, were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, he said, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ever since we started this time of quarantine and isolation, I've thought a lot about the experience of Moses and the Israelites as they wandered in the wilderness. The life they had known has been completely disrupted. They are scared and confused and frustrated and cranky as a hungry baby who just woke up from a nap. Moses hasn't shared the roadmap with them and they don't know where their destination is. No one seems to know how long this trip is going to last and after just a few weeks of wandering, I'm sure they are doubting that Moses is really the best navigator for this expedition. And so I was thinking these days, we're really getting a taste of what it's like to wander in the wilderness. So as we continue to figure out how to cope with and manage the situation we find ourselves in now, what better place to look for wisdom than the book of Numbers, as it tells the story of the wilderness journey. So we know from the book of Numbers that not too long into their wandering, Moses and the Israelites find themselves trapped in a miserable pattern that goes a little something like this. The people get grumpy and complain to Moses, who in turn complains to God. Then God gets angry and punishes the people, who in turn cry out for relief to Moses, who then intercedes on their behalf with God. God then relents, and peace reigns for a day or two, until the people start complaining about something new, and then the cycle begins all over again. As a side note, this may or may not sound like every road trip my family has ever taken together. So as I thought about this pattern and the complaints and this story from the book of Numbers, I remembered a professor I had in seminary. 
and he would encourage us to look at a passage of scripture like this and say and look for the presenting or surface issue of what they're complaining is about. So on the surface, what they're complaining about is all food-related things. First, it's that there's not enough food, and then, not long after God miraculously provides manna, the bread of heaven, raining down from the sky for them, they begin to complain because they get sick of eating it. So that's the surface issue, the presenting issue. But my professor would push us to look for what he calls the underlying or deeper issue. So yes, food and the lack thereof certainly is a reason for complaining, but what else might be going on? Why in the world would these folks who have just been freed from a life of slavery actually long to go back to that terrible life? Before Numbers 11 picks up with the passage today, back in verse 5, the people are saying to Moses, if only we had meat to eat, we remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. They're focusing on the food that they had and forgetting about the terrible life that they were leading as slaves. So the presenting issue is their stomachs and the food. But I think the deeper issue that they're really struggling with is a lack of control. On this wilderness wandering, they are not in charge. They don't know where they're going and they can't really make any decisions for themselves. And it's not like they really had that much control over their lives in Egypt, but at least there, they knew the rules. They knew that if they were good workers, they would be taken care of, relatively speaking, in return. So in that sense, they did have some measure of control over their lives. But now, in the wilderness, they don't have any control. I mean, look at Joshua, for example. He is fit to be tied in our numbers passage because some of the spirit intended to be given to the 70 elders happens to spill over onto Eldad and Medad. The leaders of that group have developed a plan and a process for who was supposed to get the spirit and who wasn't and how it was supposed to happen. And here are these two nobodies who are never mentioned again in the Bible, who somehow end up being included in this special commissioning service. And they start to prophesy on the spot. And Joshua isn't having any of it. This is breaking all the rules he helped to establish. What is happening is completely out of his control. And he, a total control freak, can't stand it. So he appeals to Moses and surely is gobsmacked when Moses replies, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Moses is totally on board with being out of control. But Joshua and the Israelites feel totally out of control as they wander in the wilderness, and they are definitely not on board with it. And the truth is, they really are not in control. But their job is not to be in control. Their job is to be faithful. Thinking ahead to those first disciples, sitting in that upper room on Pentecost Day. I bet that as they listen to the Holy Spirit rattling the windows and as they watch the divided tongues of fire descend on each one of them, 
I bet you they didn't feel much like they were in control either. So out of control did things seem, in fact, that those who had gathered outside of the building are amazed and perplexed and even assume that the disciples have indulged in some day drinking and now find themselves three and possibly even four sheets to the wind. But where Joshua is jealous and wants to keep the gift of Moses' spirit controlled and contained, the disciples are eager to share the gift of the Holy Spirit with all who are interested. So like the Israelites, their job is not to be in control. Their job is to be faithful with the gift that has been given to them. And I think that's God's message for us today. During this and any other time of disruption and disorientation in our life. God's message for us today is a reminder that once again, our job is not to be in control. Our job is to be faithful. When the Spirit is in control, and when we are faithful, those of us who are like Peter will stand up and preach the gospel to a crowd of eager listeners. Our sons and our daughters shall prophesy, and our young men shall see visions, and our old men shall dream dreams. We will be God's faithful witnesses in Judea and Samaria, and in Portsmouth, Ohio, and South Shore, Kentucky, and even to the ends of the earth. Now make no mistake about it, ministry with and empowered by the Holy Spirit will be messy and confusing and exciting and most definitely out of our control. But this is the invitation given to us on this day of Pentecost, to be faithful with the gift of the Spirit that has been given to each one of us. And I think, or I hope and I pray, that if we can manage to be faithful, even, even just a fraction of the days that God gives us on this green earth, I believe that one day everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And all we have to do, the only thing we have to do to be a part of that ministry is to trust in the one who not only created the entire universe, but the one who also knows the number of hairs on our heads. The only thing we have to do is to trust God and to be faithful with the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Spirit, the dove sent from heaven, ever one with the one who is three. From the Father you came, words of peace to proclaim, come and comfort us, speak tenderly. You, the fragrance of life, we are seeing. Gracious friend from above, in your care we are resting serene. Holy Spirit, the fire celestial, who on Pentecost came as foretold, to descend from on high and the church occupy as the cloud filled the temple of old. All the baptized you seal with your promise. I'll be
believers your gift there receive, so that all the elect, all in Christ may expect to ensure that by grace they believe. Holy Spirit, the wind of great power, source of strength and of peace and of love, truest comfort to plead as you bring all our need to the throne of God's glory above. Be the light that enlightens the scriptures, keep our feet from each devilish that troubles our soul by your chrism Christ triumph we share Holy Spirit the dove sent from heaven ever one with the one who is three from the Father you came words of peace to proclaim come and comfort Speak tenderly. As we come now to the time in the service when we celebrate the sacrament of communion, I hope you have your bread and juice or wine ready and your bulletin close at hand so that you can pray with me. So hear this invitation to the Lord's table. If you have much faith, or if you would like to have a little more, you are invited to this table. If you have done this a hundred times or have never done it before, you are invited to this table. If you are following Jesus well, or if you have tried and failed but want to try again, you are invited to this table. You are invited to this table by Jesus Christ himself, who is the host of this meal. This is his table. And he will meet you here, nourishing you and making you new. So come, you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a better life, for a fairer world. You have a place at this table. Please join with me in the prayer of great thanksgiving in your bulletins. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of grace and God of glory, from the very beginning of time, your spirit hovered over the waters, and you breathed life into us. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Lord, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptation of sin and your Spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, release to the captive, and freedom to the oppressed. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. We join our voices with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God and power of might. Heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. By the baptism of his suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension, you gave birth to your church, and on this day of Pentecost, you have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
We see now that you have kept your Easter promise to us. Never will you leave us. Never will you forsake us. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts of creation and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. As this is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. By the fire of your Spirit, forge us into one church, made up of many and different people, but together the body of Christ. Teach us to speak the language of those outside this building so that they might find a home among us in it. Set our hearts aflame with a love for the truth and the desire to do your will, that our witness to Christ may burn brightly in lives of joyful discipleship. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And hear us as we pray the way the Church has prayed together for generation after generation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night before Jesus died, he took the loaf of bread that was sitting on the table. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup from the table, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. And so as you pick up your piece of bread, this is the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. And as you pick up the cup, I say, this is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you have gathered us in, fed us lovingly with bread and cup, and now you are sending us out into the world to proclaim the message that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So send us out, Lord, into the rest of our week, tenderly to touch an ordinary, everyday world, with the holiness that surrounds us in this sacrament. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Lord and Savior. Amen. of light, Holy 
and fruit on Christ. Holy Spirit, ever working through the church's ministry, quickening, strengthening, and absolving, On this day when I am urging you, and of course me, to let go of trying to be in control, I am reminded of this Franciscan benediction that names for us very plainly what it means to be faithful. And so receive this benediction. May God bless you with discomfort, discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships discomfort, so that you will live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger, anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people. Anger, so that you will work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears, tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation, and war. Tears, so that you will reach out to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with foolishness. Foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world. Foolishness, so that you will do what others claim cannot be done. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Please call up a neighbor and pass them the peace of Christ. Thanks again for listening to this Sunday morning worship service. I'm grateful that you tuned in. If you'd like to find out more about Second Prez, you can find us on social media. We have a Facebook page and an Instagram account. You can also check out our website, which is www.secondprez-portsmouth.org. Um, if you have a joy or a concern that you would like us to keep in prayer, you're welcome to give us a call, 740-353-353. 4159 or shoot us an email at secondprez at yahoo.com. We would love to hear from you and hope that you have been blessed in our worship service today. Also, while our building may be closed, the mission and ministry of Second Presbyterian Church continues. So if you'd like to support us, we would greatly appreciate that. 
Donations can be mailed to our church at 801 Waller Street in Portsmouth, Ohio. Or if you visit our website, we have a giving page and you can give online. Thank you.